Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Series. We're on the 9th of 32 episodes of this series as we will preview and predict every men's college basketball conference tournament. And now up is the West Coast Conference. This is going to be a fun one. We already did NEC, Atlantic Sun, Horizon, Patriot League, Big South, OVC, MVC, and Sun Belt. And I think this is the most interesting one that I have done so far. Um, and there's some good teams in here. Um, and there's been some teams that um, have started hot this year and kind of fallen off and some underachievers in this conference as well that we're going to get into. And the um, seeding for this tournament. Your one seed, of course... The best team in college basketball, the number one in the AP poll, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, twenty four and three on the season and thirteen and one in conference play. Your number two seed in this tournament is number nineteenth in the country, St. Mary's, um, twenty four and six on the season, twelve and three in conference play. Your three seed is Santa Clara, twenty and ten on the year, ten and five in conference play. Your four seed is San Francisco. 23 and 8 on the year, 10 and 6 in conference play. Your 5 seed BYU, 21 and 9 on the year, 11, or 9 and 6 in conference play. Your 6 seed is Portland, 17 and 13 on the year, 7 and 7 in conference play. That's one of your overachievers for the season. Your 7 seed is San Diego, 14 and 15 on the year, 7 and 9 in conference play. Your 8 seed Loyola Marymount, 10 and 17 on the year, 3 and 12 in conference play. Your 9 seed Pacific, 8 and 21 on the year. 3 and 11 in conference play and your 10 seed is Pepperdine 7 and 24 on the year 1 and 15 in conference play that's one of your underachievers um so without further ado here we go they have the change of a format this year um it's similar to the format they used from 20, 2003 to 2011 as the 7 through 10 seeds play in the first round 5 and 6 play in the second round 3 and 4 start in the quarterfinals and the top two seeds receive buys into the semifinals, which are Gonzaga and St. Mary's. So starting on Thursday, March 3rd, you have 9 seed Pacific and 8 seed Loyola Marymount. Um, Pacific um, balance team, typical bad team, led by Alfonso Anderson, over 12 a game. And Marymount... Um, they have one of the better scorers in the conference, and Eli Scott at 17 a game. My projection here is Marymount by 7 and 3 eighths total of 135.55. So, therefore, I have Marymount advancing past Pacific convincingly. Um... The second of the first row games, 10 seed of Pepperdine and 7 seed San Diego. Uh, Pepperdine, well balanced scoring team, 2 over 13 a game. Houston Millett and Jan Zidic. And San Diego um, was a team that kind of was promising early on but fell apart. Um, two guys averaging double digit points per game. Marcellus. Erlington and Jace Townsend. My projection here is San Diego by three and a half total of one thirty nine and fifteen hundredths. So therefore, I have San Diego advancing. By the way, the tournament is held at the Orleans Arena in Vegas, as it usually is. Second round, Friday, March fourth, eight seed Loyola Marymount, and five seed BYU. And again, um, only totals in the first round because uh, it's hard to project totals. If you don't know how many points each team is going to score per game, it's easier to do sides because you just add a win or a loss and do adjusting with some numbers. And it's just simple math. And totals is hard math, as I like to call it. Um, projecting future totals. Um, so Marymount and 5C BYU. BYU won the underachievers this season. Usually a perennial contender in this conference. Um they have Alex Marcello at 17 a game. He's pretty good. Um, I have BYU projected by nine and a quarter. Therefore, BYU to the semis. I should say the, th- the third round should be the quarterfinals. Um, 
Seven seed San Diego and six seed Portland. Um, Portland, like I said, one of the overachievers this season. Um, they have an all-around guard by the name of Tyler Robertson, averaging over 15 a game. He's pretty good for them. He's led the way for them this year. Um, projection, Portland by a quarter. Therefore, I have Portland advancing to the third round. And to kick off the third round, Saturday, March 5th, 5 seed BYU, 4 seed San Francisco. San Francisco started hot, then cooled off, similar to San Diego. They have three guys over 13 a game, one at 17 a game, including Jamare Boya. Um, and then their other two good scorers are Johan Malaske and Khalil Shabazz, both averaging over 13 a game. My projection is BYU by two and a quarter. BYU is just a better team, more experienced, so I'm going with BYU to the semifinals in a seeding upset. But I don't know if they'll be it'll be a betting upset per se. And the second of the two third round games, six seed Portland, three seed Santa Clara. Santa Clara um came along in the um conference play this season. Um they're very good in terms of double digit scores. They have four of them, led by Jalen Williams, who almost averaged 18 a game, and Jossie Vronchik averaging over 15 a game. Um, I project them as a six and seven eighths favorite. So Cinderella Portland, um, they should be proud of uh, the year they've had. Santa Clara goes on to the semis. Um, and then Monday, March 7th, on ESPN, ESPN five seeded BYU, one seeded Gonzaga. Gonzaga's amazing, as we all know. Um, Drew Timmy's one of the best players in the country. Chet Holgrim's going to be a lottery pick. Julian Strawweather's really good, a sophomore guard. And Andrew Nimbard is also really good. He's going to be in the NBA draft. And they also have Razier Bolton, who's a good senior as well. So they have a ton of talent, obviously, this season, as they do each and every year. And I do think that BYU, in theory, would give them a competitive game with Barcelo leading the way for them. But my projection is Gonzaga by four and a quarter. They'll advance to the championship. It'd be stunning if they didn't, quite frankly. And then three-seeded Santa Clara and two-seeded St. Mary's. Um, St. Mary's having a good year. They've really uh, turned it on and um, in play for an at-large now. Um. They're very balanced, too, led by Matthias Toss, averaging 12.5 points per game. Tommy Coos is really good. Logan Johnson, same thing. They're both really good guards, as well as Alex Dukas. Those three guards and Toss play well together. Um, my projection is St. Mary's by 6 and 3 eighths. Therefore, I have St. Mary's going to the championship to have a rematch with Gonzaga. Can they do it again? Can they knock off Gonzaga for the second time in less than a one-month span at the Orleans Arena? Um, both teams are well-coached. Obviously, um, you have Mark Few and Randy Bennett. Um, well-balanced rosters on each side, but I just think Gonzaga has more talent. I've been projected as a six-and-a-half-point favorite here. So, of course, the Gonzaga Bulldogs I have winning the 2022 West Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. And for the second year in a row, they win that tournament. Um, third year, I should say third year in a row because St. Mary's um, won it in 19. And it would be the second, um, I'm sorry, the uh, third year in a row that Gonzaga's won the, that tournament. But obviously, COVID canceled the 2020 NCAA Tournament. But they still were the WCC tournament champions in 2020. And I do think that St. Mary's will be an at-large team. Um, I'd be surprised if they didn't make it. Even if they lost to the, in the semifinals. If they lost in the semifinals, I could see them potentially on the bubble. But if they make the finals, I could see them as like a like a 7 or an 8 seed. And if they beat Gonzaga again, I could see them as high as a potentially a 6 seed. So St. Mary's is really good, and um, they should be in the tournament for a second consecutive season. And 
for the fourth time in the past several tournaments, so the past four tournaments, and then they've been in it pretty much every year. Like, it's surprising Um, number of times they haven't made the tournament. I guess 2015 they didn't make it, but they have pretty much have been in, this, in the big dance every year for the past, like, six years. So um, I think St. Mary's will be in again. I'd be surprised if they uh, were left out in the at-large category. Alrighty, now I'm going to go over odds for this tournament. Um, Gonzaga, if I had to guess, I'd say Gonzaga is like minus 250. Or at most minus 300, and they're minus 390. So um, they're a bigger favorite than I thought. St. Mary's is 5-1, to one, Santa Clara is 14-1, to one, San Fran's 30-1, to one, BYU is 35-1, to one, and the rest are over 200-1. or over 200 to one. Um. Value play, BYU. Um, been there and done that. An elite score they have with Barcelo. Usually a team that underachieves in the regular season sometimes rises to the occasion in the conference tournament. And we see them like become a bid stealer, especially in a league like the West Coast Conference. I mean, this happened to St. Mary's a few years ago. But people say that they would have been in the tournament regardless, which they probably would have been because St. Mary's tends to get a little bit of favoritism from the committee, especially over the last several years as they gained respect from a lot of the media, the fans, and um, the selection committee for the tournament. And if I have a value play here, it's BYU at 35-1 to to win this tournament, but I do think ultimately that Gonzaga will win this conference tournament. All right, next up will be the Southern Conference.